it is time to drop 100 tips and tricks for Apex Legends. This amazing new game that's blowing the heck up. Now, with these 100 tips videos I do, we go fast. If you want to save something for later, I've attached everything in a pinned comment. If I miss something, be sure to throw a comment with your tip or trick and I'll heart your comment for others to see. That is it. Let's roll it. After you slay an opponent, you can push their crates around. Like that. Just walk into it, slide into it, whatever you want, get into cover. And then after a couple of seconds, five seconds or so, the box will become rock solid. So it cannot be moving anymore. Let's see here in a second. Let him sit for a little bit. Now you can kind of see it's not really moving anymore, is it? And there you go. Using the balloons, jumping out from the dropship in the beginning can end you up on hills, mountaintops, where you're not supposed to be. It'll give you a 30 second grace period where you can just chill up here. You could easily sit up here and snipe for a good time before having to go down. Knockdown shields do not protect you from melee damage. It is going to be 4 hits or 3 hits and then just one small beam. The range scope has a range finder in it. You can see it to the right here. It shows how long you need to aim and then you can aim for the lines in case they're 200 meters out. Aim for that mark. See here again on the big fat scope. Well, another big fat scope. 10 times here. You can then use the range finder and miss your shot. There's these cute little robots around the map which make this kind of noise. And they they bring loot. Get them. Hit them. Air drops in this game will not squish you, kill you or anything. They will just push you away and be like, hey, I'm landing here, buddy. Now pick up my shit. In case you're a clumsy duck and you fall outside the map, don't fear it. Your crate will be teleported back up and your teammates can grab it and rest you again. While using the zip line, you can jump up, turn around and hook on it again. See here, we're going to jump up, swap around and go back up. You can see the drops on your map indicated with little blue circles coming down. Now these drops do take a lot longer to come down than the player summoned one by lifeline, but they do have better loot. The extended max allows you to carry more ammo, but the color difference just allows you a gray one, a little bit more, blue one, a little bit more than that, you see gray one, 8, this one is going to allow us to carry 12, the blue one would then be 10. So the better the quality, the more ammo you can carry in a mag. When you get those juicy airdrop guns, be aware, the ammo that comes with it is the only ammo you get. You don't have any extra in your inventory, you cannot find any spare ones. What you see is what you get. If you're lucky enough to find a golden weapon from the hotspot area in the beginning, it comes with all attachments decked out. Now there is a thing to this, you cannot remove or select the different optics. That means if you don't like this scope, too freaking bad, this is what you're gonna get. It doesn't have increased damage or anything, it's just decked out. If an airdrop has not been looted, it will light up the sky with a beam. So look here, there's triple airdrops just for you to take. You can walk through teammates, meaning that if they're in a doorway, being annoying or something like that, you can just scoop right through them, no problem. Touch their butt, or their wiener, whatever you want. When you kill an enemy player, their body shield automatically regens to full. So that means even though you burnt their armor, it will be fully charged. Explosions will open doors. If you pop an ability before you go into a portal and it doesn't finish off, it'll cancel it. So beware, either you do it before or after. The easiest way to tell the difference between the drops is the regular airdrop has the red thing on top and is super slow at drop in, is marked on the map, and while lifelines drop is going to be super fast down, not marked, and will be blue. You can hear when armor is done. That sound. You can tell sort of how much your enemy is going to have HP wise when you hit him the first time. What type of armor color is going to show up? White, blue, purple, or yellow. Or none. Just regular red. That means they have no armor. Now what is wonderful about this game is that nobody likes fall damage. I mean ask Tim the Tapman. He freaking drops, he dies, right? In this game, you're completely free to be a clumsy duck. Melee in this game is nasty and should not be underrated. Be careful. Right, when you start slapping people, they get confused and they don't know what's what's hitting them. They just can't deal with it. It's really awesome because that way you still have a fighting chance. Even though you might not have a gun, you can always go slap a guy in the face. And it's just, it surprises people when you start hitting them. You can see if it's a teammate that's firing, listen to the gunshots and then look down to the left. It'll show like a little gunfire thing every time he shoots. As long as there's respawn beacons left, you can respawn. So if your teammate picks up your banner, he just needs to get you to a respawn beacon. And that way, you jump right back into the fight and go again. Die, rinse, repeat. 
The heal bud from Lifeline does not have infinite heals. As you can see here, three players attached. The other guy went away. It'll get more heals than me. Every place has different tier loot, and you can check it always in the top left. This place is a high tier loot zone, so that means there's going to be a bunch of grease for you to steal. You can check your teammate's gear by opening your inventory and look down to the left. Then you can ping a helmet and say, hey, Bobby, you need this. Come take it. In this game, mobility is key. Try to outplay your opponent by jumping across obstacles. Now, this isn't the best example, but in this case, we try to go on top, jump around. But the key to get from this is to keep using your environment to jump around, find new ways to deal with your opponents, and do not lose to melee. That is awkward. You do not need to have your knockdown shield activated all the time. You can kind of bamboozle players. Make them think you can finish you and then get shot in the back by your teammates as they try to do something fancy. And then escape. Slowly. The respawn beacons are marked across the map with these tiny little green dots. Now they can only be used once through the entire game. It's not once per team or anything like that. Once one team has used one of them, they're completely out for the rest of the match. Do not fear them. You have small indicators that even shows you where they're going to blow up. Just say cover for a second in between them, you're fine. Go back into the action, shred their heads. You can request ammo by hopping up with your inventory here. Slam dunk and middle mouse click one of the ammo types. Backpacks allows you to carry more. Gray would be one more line, blue, two, purple, three. Max inventory space is the three of them. That's what the legendary one gives too. You do not need to be at the start of the zip line to attach to it. Jump off a ledge, hook onto it. Resting in this game is fast. So if you have a teammate and he's in cover and the other team isn't really that aggressive playing, just jump behind, get him back up, reset the fight. See like that, we're already two players again. Lifeline's heal butt can be pushed a little bit. Look at it. So cute. Push it into cover. With Pathfinder, you can go to spots you're not really supposed to be. Like on top of this thing, the only way to get up there is by using Pathfinder. You cannot vault up there or anything like that. And there's different spots where you could do this too. Now this one is climbable, but it's just easy to get on top and have a nice lookout. A neat team combo is using Bangalore's smoke here. And then on top of that, have the good old Bloodhound use his vision. You can see right through that. Goes with the gas too. So you can hunt players together and make some spicy plays. If you got good team synergy, go right ahead. You should see this this guy just murdered me. Hit him with the Peacekeeper. <laughs> Armor in this game does not break. It can be charged up no matter how many times you burn it out. You're good to just use it again. It does not break. There's no like durability or anything like that. Bangalore smoke deal damage. Wait for it. Yep. I mean, shit. I hear again. Sometimes you get lucky, man. You get that hit mark and you're like, all right, that's cool. But it's 10 damage. Try to practice the wiggle looting, man. In this game, you do not want to stand still and give that free heady away. If they have a big snipper. Just wiggle around a little bit, move that butt left and right, and you'll be a little bit more safe. You'll get used to it real quick. So everyone has their favorite champion, a legend, that they want to play. Now, if you're not the first pick, in this case, I'm the first pick, so I can pick whatever the heck I want. But as a second and a third, you can hover over. Let's see if these guys do it. They're not. But if they choose to hover over, they kind of show up with a little bit of number that says, all right, well, they prefer playing that. You see here now? Well, I got Wraith because that's my number one. See the third hopping around now? He's not, he, he'll play anything. But that way you can kind of be nice so other people like, all right, well, I don't really care what I'm playing, but if that guy wants to play that, then I'll pick something else. The champion squad is the best rated squad with the highest stats from the previous game they played. In this case, this is the squad. If you kill these people, you gain extra XP, AKA you get levels faster. More importantly, you get the crates faster and get all those yummy, yummy skins. The jump master is chosen by random and that person decides where the hell you're gonna go. You can jump solo too, but I suggest you do stick with your squad and don't split up until the very end. There is bullet drop in this game. The weapons are not a hit scan. There is travel time and the beans do drop. As we see here, far shot. So that's another thing to learn and get comfortable with and the only way to get comfortable with it is to try your luck and see if you can hit those shots. You can do people dirty in the end if you want. Go close to them and hold E to do a finisher. And that is stuff that you can unlock too to have different ways to kill people. Yay. Be aware though, by being bad managed, you might get shot in the back while you do so. Careful. 
There's zip lines placed around the map, which you can grab onto. Go back and down. You can even jump on the way down. Swap around. And go back up. In the beginning, there's different hotspots you can go to, such as the Hydro Dam in this case, which is a hot zone, which has at least one fully decked out weapon. Well, it has one. And then we have the airship right here that we can go to. Jeff. Which we're going to. You can see the projectile of this thing. It's going to stop up here, then park down and drop some ropes down so people can go up and down from it. It's a neat addition, and there's usually a lot of fighting here. Too bad I did not pay attention, because we are not making this. Anyways, let's go down here. One of the best things in this game the game is great right but the ping system is freaking nuts use it help your teammates ping loot ping places ping enemies you don't need this turbocharger let your teammates know come get it you know ping where you want to go use the ping system after you've been running around looting for a little bit your inventory gets stacked you can see these red markers on your icons which means that you don't have any use for it so when you're new learning what goes into what just drop the junk you don't need let your teammates know about it we have the zip lines, but we also have the balloons. The balloons are crazy awesome. Like, go anywhere. Freaking all the way up, and then you can glide to, well, a distant place. It's very good to get around. If you see a drop, and it doesn't have a bean, and it has these brown plates, that means it's been opened. Because once it opens up, pushes out, as you see here, the inside is brown. That means no more loot for you. Now, while you're having fun in your zip line, you cannot drop a loot. You cannot use abilities while you're on it, you can use it before you get on it, but while you're on it, no inventory management. To get faster going, slide a little bit, then wait, and slide a little bit again. When you start dropping in speed, get back up. When sliding about, do not spam it. This is how it looks when you spam it. You do not gain very much speed from that. You gotta do it right. It is all about mobility in this game. You gotta be a swift monkey jumping around places. You can pretty much climb anything. Well, not anything, but you can get weird places sort of like this antenna here. There you go, sitting camp. The colors of the crates indicates the best piece of single item loot in that crate. In this case, it's a shotgun bolt, and in the other crate, we got a skull piece of rifling in it. The supply ship does not only come during the very start of the game. As you see here, during the late game, there's one scoop and right in here that's gonna land over here, dip down, and let you board it for some nasty loot. Maybe, if you're lucky. Who knows? When dropping with your jump master in the very end, split from your team and land close to them so you don't all get stacked into one big bunch and can get more loot. Doors can get kicked in and after two of those kicks, they will break. Keep an eye on this little bar on your screen. It indicates your inventory space, how much you have left, how much you can carry. If your inventory is full, it will turn red and be like, nope, drop some shit, buddy. When sliding downhill, jump at the very end to gain some extra momentum and speed, as the doc would say, and just keep on flying. Just slide, and then jump. When using the crappy grenade that nobody likes, it ticks off like this, if you hit people with it. Tick, 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 mother freaking Call of Duty style, there you go. Pay attention when the voice calls out for airdrops, because there can be multiple airdrops inbound. As you see here, we have two to go for, but ours is coming down right on top of us here. But, on multiple locations, there could be multiple airdrops depending on the circle size. The legendary armor, body shield, is in my opinion the weakest one. You need to go use your finisher to get a fully charged shield. That means like, a lot of downtime, maybe in the middle of a fight where you gotta finish a guy to get that full shield. Whereas the helmet reduces the time spent on charging your abilities up again. Which is very convenient. The legendary backpack is disgusting. Faster heals, half the time to use them. You just pop one up, just like that. That is pretty freaking gross, and I love it. The legendary knockdown shield allows you to resurrect once by yourself, meaning you don't have to have a teammate touch your butt. Playing Wraith, you can pop your ultimate ability and then your Q after that to go invisible and move like a fast sprinting guy or girl and get there safely and fast. The Arc Star is my favorite nade type deal. Because you have full control. Stick it to people. Blow up. 
I know I call this my favorite gun, but it's just one of my favorite guns. This freaking devotion with this. <laughs> if you can find the <laughs> ammo, man. <laughs> just listen to the laugh. It is nasty. What, what can I say? I mean, the wingman, every, every gun is amazing, all right? I love this game. This wasn't really a tip. I just dig this game, man. There's a text-to-speech feature, which allows the chat to be turned into voice. Kind of like Microsoft Sam. Beautiful, right? A lifeline's Q ability allows multiple players to heal at the same time. You remain a spectator for exactly 10 seconds before the transition. So it's more like 12 seconds. But then the transition starts, flops you over to spectate your teammates. Wraith allows you for some aggressive plays. Now, some players might spot these, but you can go invisible, jump around them, and shoot them in the face. Maybe they're too busy looking into a rock healing. Slam dunk, here you go. You're the champion. Be aware that sprinting will cancel your heal. The other way to cancel this is to left click. Jumping, anything like that, will not cancel it. While the peacekeeper with the mod is insane, the airdrop shotgun is pretty nasty with the range too, so do not be scared of taking this for a range fight. You can see how many players remain in the drop ship. I keep saying shit. Drop ship by looking at the top of your screen. Once you load up beans in a weapon, they stay in the weapon. Except for if they have an extended mag, when you then drop the gun, the remaining bullets will drop on the floor next to it. They're trying to snatch my loot. Some optics have variable zooms. So that means you can hold down shift to zoom in and out of the with them. See here, four times, eight times. There's different ones of these, so go mess around with them. We'll throwable utility stack in twos. To get used to is using the UI. You can see all your attachments on your weapons down to the right, your armor to the left, how many heals you have, all that. You don't need to always open your inventory to see what you have. You can check your previous match stats by hitting the button in the menu. You can zoom in in the dropship by holding right mouse button. Just to get a clear vision. Weapon mods only come in one tier. Meaning this choke here is always going to be a purple one. Precision choke hop up is probably one of the most nasty attachments. It lets you charge your shotgun and have crazy good accuracy. Look at this. What is that? Right? That is nasty. Take this guy out. Not a problem. We'll just snip him. Hit him again. Out of the game. Go for his teammates. Not a problem. Choke it up. Out of the game. Hop around a little bit. Freaking fly over this rock. Jump kick him in the face. There you go. Now this isn't really about the hop up. It's just a good play. There you go. Another time. 100 damage. Just like that. Flopping the weapon mod, the hop-up on the triple take makes it a charged sniper, which means when you charge it fully up, it'll hit one single beam that deals more damage instead of the triple. Skull appears a rifling attachment hop-up makes your freaking wingman a beast and your longbow. The wingman, I think it's around 100 damage and a heady. That is a lot. Tap, tap. Freaking out of the game, man. Out of the fuck up. The select fire receiver for the gun that nobody really cares about at the moment. Now, this mod just allows you to put it on auto fire. Which is cool. Turbo charger hop up for the freaking devotion. Makes it just a freaking laser cannon, right? It was already pretty nasty, but with this one, if you can find the ammo, it shreds. Just the time you save on charging up, it's just instant a lot of damage output. Shooting from the balloon is uh, kind of like those trick shots you'll see on YouTube eventually. But like, I hit this six shot. The accuracy is doo-doo. The quickest way to get down is start diving. Gain that speed, and then you can kind of even out. And then when you start dropping in speed too much again, you can, like, if you got to go far, dip down a little bit again, gain some speed, start gliding. A good thing is to learn how to spot the difference between the stocks, in case you need to know which one of them you need to look for. There's the fat one and the small one. The bigger one is the sniper stock, the smaller one is the AR. Just take a look at them and memorize them. If you have a Pathfinder in your team, you can use him to go look up a survey beacon and figure out where the next zone is going to be at. This is really useful for the later circles. Now for this one, it's kind of like, alright. I mean, it's good to know, but for the late game circles, it is really neat. If you don't want to replace a piece of loot, simply click it again. You do not need to close your entire inventory and open it back up. Just click it and click it back. There's no need to escape and go right back in there. There's three different types of currencies. There's the Crafting materials, which you get from opening packs. 
legend tokens, which you get from just playing the game, and Apex coins, which is pay to play, basically, to get the cool skins, all that jazz. Lifelines airdrops do not come with any weapons. It is only support items. You will never see a legendary gun in it. Jumping from a balloon, you cannot attach to a zip line right away. But look at this chunky monkey. Mm. We don't need to ADS because we're a potato and lucky. The time survived XP is based on your team, not just your performance. Thank you very much for watching. In the end, that means that you hopefully found something that you could use. Be sure to leave a little bit of a fat like and subscribe for more. There's going to be a bunch of Apex Legends content coming because I am enjoying the heck out of this game. Hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time. Peace.